Hello, I'm River Smith with Liberation Brew, and I'm coming to you today to actually read an article by someone else uh, because I think it is so important that uh, the public uh, become aware of his story. Uh, his name is Ahmet Rabani, and he's an inmate at the Guantanamo Bay Prison. His article is called Stuck in Guantanamo and the world has forgotten I am there. The world has forgotten me. Though I once had friends, I now have nobody. Though I once had a government, Pakistan has turned its back on me. Though I once was a human being, I have been reduced to a number. One, four, six, one. And abandoned in a dark hole, the military prison at Guantanamo Bay. I am officially a prisoner of war, though the only battle I ever fought back home as a taxi driver in Karachi was the rush hour traffic. I was mistaken for an extremist, captured by General Pervez Musharraf's government, and sold to the CIA for a bounty in 2002. I've now been detained at Guantanamo without trial for nearly 14 years. President Donald Trump's lawyers argued in court this month that I and other Guantanamo prisoners who have filed habeas corpus petitions could be held by the United States government for a hundred years if that is how long the conflict lasts. I have withstood a lot of torture. We are said to be the most dangerous prisoners in the world, yet in the years since this prison was opened, there have been no murders, no escape attempts, no drugs. The only deaths have been those of the nine men who succumbed to health problems or took their own lives. The only alleged sexual abuse has been at the hands of American interrogators. The Miami Herald reports that to operate Guantanamo Bay Prison, it costs $11 million per prisoner per year. That would be more than $30,000 a day, just for me. I have gone on hunger strikes many times to peacefully protest my imprisonment. Uh, I am back to not eating, but this time it's not a strike. I have chronic stomach problems so acute that I cannot consume hard food without vomiting blood. I am slowly disappearing, dropping a pound a week. I currently weigh 95 pounds. I have asked for papaya and figs as well as lamb, the only meat soft enough for my stomach to digest. Although a previous commander said I could have what I needed, I'm not getting it. For a while, we had a physician whom we called Dr. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, you can't have this, he would say. Unfortunately, you can't have that. Now, we have Dr. Surprise. They have approved your food except for the lamb, he said. I am surprised you are not getting it. Instead of giving me papaya and figs and lamb, the guards force-feed me cans of nutritional formula. They used to let us receive the liquid food while watching television. Now they strap my hands and legs down in a restraint chair. We call it the torture chair. I have withstood a lot of torture. Before they brought me to Guantanamo, the Americans took me to a black site in Kabul known as the Dark Prison. There, my hands were shackled overhead for days on end. Do you have any idea how painful that is? With your shoulders gradually dislocating? Maybe you read in the Senate Intelligence Committee's torture report about the prisoner who tried to cut off his own hand to end the pain. That was me. Torture makes you go mad. Sometimes I catch myself going mad again now. Every time I am force-fed, every time I meet with my lawyer, every time I see a doctor, 
they use some kind of metal detector device to do a cavity search. They have never found anything in all these years. What I am meant to be hiding, I have no idea. It is pointless, but I have to wonder if the radiation it emits isn't my own private Hiroshima or Nagasaki four, six, eight times a day. Maybe I'm paranoid, but I feel that something bad is happening to me deep inside. When someone says good morning, I do not respond anymore. There is no morning and no evening. There is only despair. That's an article by Ahmet Rabani, a prisoner at Guantanamo for the last 14 years. He's, he says a lot about what goes on for those prisoners and what goes on in that prison and what goes on in our so-called justice system. Uh, it's our job as free citizens to do what we can to change this. If you want to check out his story, if you, you know, if you don't believe what he writes, feel free to do that and check it out with his lawyers, check it out with the general uh, volunteer uh, lawyers that are uh, trying to help all of the prisoners at Guantanamo. Uh, and uh, contract, contact your congressperson and your senator to let them know that it's time to take care of these prisoners and close Guantanamo. This is River Smith for Liberation Bureau.